our move left button only moved our 2D polygon to the left. We're going to add more buttons so we can see the full range of it. So on the move left we're going to change this to translate 3D polygon and we have to give it an extra value over here of Z. But we're not going to move the Z with this button so just make it zero. Let's change this to a 5 so it moves faster. Create a new button, call it move right and uh, you can just copy the code from the move left and just change which value it updates. So this will be minus 5 and not 5 move it to the other direction. Then create another button called move in and it won't change the x value that'll stay zero. It'll change the z value. Um, let's make it by 0.1 each time. Then create another button and we'll call that out and that's going to change it from 0.1 to minus 0.1. So that'll move it out of the screen. Now before we see if it works we have to remove the function that finds the centroid of a 2D triangle and remove the rotation of that triangle because we're not working with a 2D triangle anymore and those functions will fail. After that let's see if it works. If we run it, uh, okay there's a line over there, let's quickly move it in, oh yeah there's the rest of it. Now you can see this triangle is very sharp, I'm moving it left and it seems like the back of it isn't moving at all but it is, it's just that the perspective is very sharp and we're going to fix that now, it's almost as if you've zoomed in on it very much and what's happened there is our perspective on the triangle looks something like this so any object we have that's slightly long gets pushed all the way back to there and we want to move that so it looks like this so any object that's the same length now only has a slight perspective to it like this and that's very easy to achieve we just change the amount of perspective we apply to it in other words the amount of z we divided by so let's go back to our draw 3d liner function and over here where we divide we're just going to times the z value with a value we're going to call the focal value um, it's almost like moving the vanishing point further away so you have less of a perspective effect on it so just bracket these so let's create a new variable quickly um, a global variable that we can change as we wish and we're going to call it focal value so focal value is a real value because it's going to go from 0 to 1. We're going to times our z values with that so they become smaller. So the smaller the focal value is, the less perspective they will. So times focal values. Add that into all of them. And a good focal value to start with is 0.2. So on initiation just make focal value equal to 0.2. Let's run this and see if the perspective has changed a bit. And you can see already it looks more like a triangle but perspective is still very strong on it. So let's try 0.1 or 0.02, see what that does. And there you can see our triangle is still pretty sharp, but it's the perspective on it is much less. And you can see it moving around as if it's in 3D space. Our other problem here is you can see our focal point is at 0, 0, and we want to move that to the center of the screen, which is very easy. We're not going to change our entire program so it works from the center of the screen, we're only going to change our draw function. So as soon as it draws it, we're just going to move the entire scene by half the screen width this way and half the screen width downwards as well. So create a new variable called screen width and screen height and those are integer values because the screen is only measured in pixels and it can't be anything else. Now, I'm quickly going to see what our image here is, but you can obviously make these variables. I'm just going to make it a constant now. And our screen is 400 by 300. On initiation, screen width is 400 and screen height is 300. Then by our draw line function, we're going to add half the screen width to this. So plus screen width divided by 2 for all the x values. And for all the y values, it's plus half the screen height. And that's it. So let's see if that moves it to the center of the screen. And you can now see if we move the triangle in, it moves towards the center of the screen. And if you move it right, you can see that it's focused on that point over there. So we move it left and out. What we're going to do now is make the polygon move with the mouse across the, across the canvas. Really easy. All you're going to do is you're going to add two variables here called mouse x and mouse y. And they are integers because the mouse position is only measured in where it is on the screen in pixels. And you click on your canvas over here or your image. You go to events and you go to on mouse move and you double click on that. And every time it detects the mouse has moved over it, it will call this function. And the function comes with an x and a y value that it automatically gets from the computer about where the mouse is. So you don't need to fetch anything. If you say some variable is equal to x 
it'll fetch the x that this function has already gotten for you and that'll be the x of the current mouse position so what we're going to say so what we're going to do is the following we want to measure the distance that the mouse has moved so we need to get its original position and when it gets detected again we need to get its new position and then get this distance in other words break it up into an x component and a y component and then we'll know how much to move the polygon by in each axis so what we'll do is we'll create new variables here called delta x and delta y which is just the change in x and the change in y and they are integer values now delta x is just going to equal the current x minus mouse x because mouse x would be a stored value which we're going to make the previous mouse x delta y is going to equal to y minus mouse y and then we're going to say mouse x is actually now the current x and mouse y is equal to the current y so we stored mouse x and mouse y first then we used these x and y values to work out the difference between the previous mouse and the current mouse and then we stored the current mouse back over the previous mouse so the current mouse becomes the previous mouse then we have to translate our polygons we're going to say test poly is equal to translate 3d polygon by an x value of delta x and a y value of delta y and we're not going to change the z value so we're going to make that zero and that should be it so now let's just move this in towards the screen and if i move my mouse you can see that the triangle moves according to the distance my mouse has moved then we can increase the mouse sensitivity by timesing the delta values over here by something so um, obviously we can make that a variable so if you want an application with variable mouse sensitivity you can make it a variable but i'm just going to times it by five for now to make it five times the sensitive times five to run this again but you will notice that our polygon is not where our mouse is our polygon is only at the center of where it should be when our mouse is at zero zero and it's the same it's the same problem we had with the focal well the disappearing point of the polygon being at that point over there and all you need to do is add half the screen width to mouse x and half the screen height to mouse x as well so this is going to be the x value plus screen width divided by two and the y value plus screen height divided by two so that'll add your values over here then the mouse x and y will obviously be these as well and because we're dividing by two we have to round so just round the values of these off and here you can see that the polygon now moves with the mouse fairly well if you move it further into the screen and we can move it further out of the screen and you can see that the vertices will start being clipped as they get too close to the screen so that's the only line that is not through 0 0.01 that we added last time let's move it in again you can see that it draws the rest of the triangle now